Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to review some concepts that you've seen before and then show how they apply to dictionaries. Alright, so let's get going. So first I'm going to make some blank or empty strings, lists, and dictionaries. So word is equal to the double quotation mark, it's a blank string. Numbers is equal to the square brackets with nothing in between, that's a blank list. And a blank dictionary is equal to the squiggly brackets with nothing in between. And these are blanks or empty. All right, now if I want to add to these, this is how it goes. So I could add the letter A to this by going word is equal to word plus A. So I'm adding it with the plus. With the list, I'm using append. I'm using the list method, and this will add the number four. And with the dictionary, I'm going to use the square bracket terminology. So dictionary bracket key, and this will add the key player one with a score of four. And just to show how it works, I'm going to print them all out. And there they are. Now, if I want to overwrite these, I would do this. So the word, I would just straight away give it a different string. With the numbers, since the number four is index zero, I would just overwrite the index zero. So numbers bracket, square bracket zero is equal to five, and that makes it five. And with the dictionary, it's just dictionary bracket key equals to the new value. Just like that. And if I printed them out one more time, here I've completely overwritten what's there before. All right, so now let's say I don't want to overwrite completely what's there before. But maybe I want to modify it a little bit. So for instance, maybe my score, I add one to the score. So now the score is six instead of five. So the way I'm going to do that is numbers bracket zero is equal to numbers bracket zero plus one. And the same thing with the dictionary. And just to show they work, I'm going to print it out. And you see this was a five, it became a six. And the way this works is I need to do the right side first. So in the case of the list, I'm doing numbers bracket zero plus one. I do that first, and then I overwrite what's on the left. So whatever comes on the right, it's the order of operations. So I have to do the right first. I overwrite number zero. So the new value of number zero it was five, and now it's six. And the same thing is happening with dictionaries. I do the right side first. Dict with the key of player one, that's five. I add one to that, and then I overwrite what's on the left side. So dict player one was five, and now it's six. So I'll use this technique whenever I have a score and I would increment the score or change the score. I also might use this technique if I have, for instance, an inventory of fruits. Maybe I bought some fruits or I sold some fruits and I need to adjust the fruits that I have. I'll use this technique right here. Okay, next I'm going to show the in. So for the string, I can use if a in word. I'll print out a is in word. I can do the same thing for lists. So I'll check to see if the six is in numbers. And we did this before, so this is a review. You could do something very, very similar with dictionaries and keys. And the way that works is this. I can check to see if the key is in the dictionary as a key. So I'll type it here, and it'll hopefully be obvious when I do that. So here it is. You see player one is in the dictionary as a key. And it is because you see the dictionary is player one with a key, and the value is six. I can do this in a more obvious way. If player one in dict dot keys with a parentheses, and you see here it's the same thing, except I'm making it really, really obvious that I'm looking for the keys. This right here, you might recognize from lists, it's called a dictionary method, meaning that it's a function associated with dictionaries. We'll probably do that later on, but for now, just know that if you do the dictionary dot keys with a parentheses, make sure you have the parentheses, it's a way to make it really obvious that you're looking for the keys. I can also do the same thing for values but it's going to be something that you do a little bit less. So six is in a dictionary as a value, which it is right there. Uh, but the main point here is I can use the in to look for keys and also values in dictionaries, just as I use them with lists and strings. All right, finally, I'm going to show the four. So with this first one, I'm going to print out every letter in the word. With the second one, I'm going to print out every item in the list. And with the third one, I'm going to print out every key in the dictionary. So here's the first one, every letter in the word. The second one, there is only one item in the list, but there it goes. It prints out six. And the third one, there's only one key in the dictionary, and so, but it prints that key out. Maybe I'll make it more obvious. And let's run that one more time. So here's each letter in the word. Here's each item in the list. And here's each key in the dictionary. Now, I don't have to have this dot keys. I can just do it without the dot keys for key in dict. You see it does the same thing both times. 
It's just that if you have the dot keys, it makes it super obvious that it's keys that you're looping over. And that will help you keep track of what your code is doing. All right, so here are the solutions to the mini labs. As always, you should try them out first, but in case you get stuck, here are the solutions. So the first one, updating dictionaries too. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this dictionary value of 12 and lower it by five. So we're gonna lower it by five. And the way we do that is go fruit dict apple is equal to fruit dict apple minus five. And so the way this works is we're gonna do the right side first. There's an order of operations. We do the right side first. We take whatever it was before, which is 12, minus five, and then we overwrite what's on the left. And when we print that out, it's seven. All right, next one. We're gonna check for the keys in the dictionary. And the way we do that is if key in dictionary dot keys with a parentheses. So we're gonna check to see if pair is in the dictionary. And pair is in the dictionary. So that's what we edit here. So we edit this right here. So if pair in, in the dictionary dot keys in the parentheses. So if pair in dictionary dot keys parentheses. And that'll print out Pairs are in the fruits dictionary, let's see, and it is. Next one, we're gonna loop over keys in the dictionary. So you can loop over keys in the dictionary with a for key in dictionary dot keys. So again, for key in dictionary dot keys. So we're gonna loop over the dictionary keys. So this is very much like for item in list, for number in numbers, that kind of thing, for letter in string. So for key in the dictionary dot keys, so we know it's keys we're looping over. And this key here, you can name anything you want it to. It's just that if I name it key, it becomes super obvious what it is. Okay, so when I run that code, it prints out something here, something here three times. That's almost what I want. I wanna print out the key, and I wanna print out the value. So let's do that now. And to do that, I'm gonna use an F string. So the key is the key. And I want to print the value also. So the value is dictionary bracket key. So like that. And when I run this code, I'll shrink it a little bit so you can see it. I'm going to print out again with an F string. Key is a key and dictionary bracket key. That's the value. Is the value. And that's what it prints out. Okay, for the last one. Last one is the debugging. I'm going to clear this. And we're going to try to run it. It gives me an error. And so this is a really common error that happens when you use a dot key. People do stuff like they do dictionary dot key or the dictionary dot key with the parentheses or dictionary dot keys without the parentheses. It's gotta be dictionary dot keys with the parentheses. And when I run that, it's good. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.